Hey guys, it's Lucastrophe LG. Um, sorry for the lack of updating and posting. Um, I've been very busy. I don't even remember the last time I posted, but the main thing is I'm back. Um, thank you for the people who have stuck around. Um, I am a little bit sick. I'm recovering from a camp that I just went to. So if I'm coughing a lot during the video, I apologize. I'll try not to cough or anything, but um, yeah. Um, anyways, I'm gonna be reacting to three amusement park horror stories today. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. Um, and yeah, let's watch the video. I don't like this already. No, I don't like it. Two of my clothes also, by the way, I just want to say Kevin. something oh, before this starts. Um, I apologize if the lighting is bad. I'm, my ring light is not working at the moment, so. Um, but yeah. Um, anyways, enjoy. To go on late night adventures. I have so many fond memories going on creepy midnight exploration sessions with them. Oh, so have I. But I have some not so great ones as well. However, the worst experience was the night we went to Joyland Amusement Park in Kansas, an abandoned park surrounded by a somewhat typical suburban area. We lived only 10 minutes away from the park, so we figured it would be our next late night destination. We always brought our Phoenix flashlights, backpacks, and boots whenever we went to places like this. Today, mostly everything in Joyland Amusement Park has been torn down, but this was back in like 2011 or 2012, and at that time, most of the buildings and rides were still standing. We pulled up on a side road next to the parking lot since it seemed a lot less sketchy than pulling up into the parking lot itself. Then we figured we should just pull up onto the grass next to the woods by the park, because God forbid if a cop would drive down the road. Yeah. Kevin led the way while that Trevor sounds about and I right. followed behind talking to each other, sometimes joking about how much more eager Kevin was to move ahead than we were. We kept our voices low, however, because we never knew if there might still be security in places like this. All the carnival shacks that once held concessions and games had now been ransacked, trashed with cans and bottles, and sprayed with graffiti. It was basically the scene that you would expect to see. That's terrifying. Park. I don't like how there's live footage. Years. Even breathing. though the park was surrounded by suburbs, it was kind of encased in by woods in almost all directions. So instead of late night traffic, all we heard were crickets and other night creatures. It added to the experience because to be honest, all three of us in a certain way liked being freaked out. We walked into another carnival game stand. This one with the paintings at top still not completely worn that away. That looks like Wild Thing at Valley Fair. It had some smiling cartoon character holding a dart gun. So Absolutely I guess it was not. some kind of target hitting game. Nope. Now it was just rubble and litter on the ground. Suddenly there was the sound of a glass bottle breaking not too far away. When we turned in that direction it became clear it definitely came from the bigger looking building. Perplexed and kind nope. of shaken, the three of us went in that direction. Okay, stopped, uh, here's the thing, I don't understand. Why would you go in the direction that the sound is? Don't investigate. What are you doing? I get you're curious, but do not care about your own lives? Like, what? I, I will never understand. Actually, maybe I will because I have done it once. But I will mostly, for the most part, I'll never understand why people run towards the danger. Just run away. So I'm, I'm gone. I you I hear a noise I'm not supposed to hear. I am, I'm gone. I am not, not on the premises There's anymore. Way there. When Absolutely we saw someone not. standing in the corner of what was once called the Wacky Shack attraction. The person was legitimately just standing facing the corner wall of the entrance. I whispered at my friends to back away slowly. There was clearly <coughs> something wrong with this person, and we didn't want them to hear us. Oh! Oh, that's the... Uh, trying to avoid making any noise. I, I, again, I, I don't like when they show live footage. I... It makes it too real for me, and I, the talking and sound effects are enough already. I don't need to see visuals. I, like, I, I, I don't need to see that. I don't want that. Almost like something out of a cliche horror movie, when either Kevin or Trevor stepped on a beer can, which made a really loud crunch. Wow. 
Why the sound effects? Why, Mr. Nightmare? Why? The person standing in the corner God. turned their head and looked at us. But the speed in which they turned their head was what really scared me. No. It was almost like a deer. We can now see it was a man. He had a deranged look on his face. Of course the three of us simply walked quickly away. We didn't run because that would only be more cause for this person to chase us. We made it to the woods where we were cut through <coughs> to get to the car. Halfway there, I'm so Kevin sorry. looks back I'm and mutters, so recovering oh, that over getting sick. I'm we sorry. look back and see the guy <clears throat> just standing stiff next to a tree in the distance, a few meters away. I don't like this. Running seemed like our only sensible option at this point. It didn't take long before we were at the car. We screamed at Kevin to unlock it as he fumbled for his keys. No, 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 no. As we got into the car and looked out the windows, we could all see him again. This time once again standing stiff like a statue, no. hunched over by the tree lines of the woods. Kevin drove off, and Trevor and I screamed out taunts to the man. That didn't mean we weren't still absolutely shaken permanently. It's scary to think that none of us ever actually saw that weird man move. He seemed to always be standing right. still whenever we saw him. Okay. I was taking story. my family on a road trip to South Korea. Okay, okay that, that one wasn't that bad. It could have been worse. I mean, the visuals were definitely not helping. Yeah, no, the visuals were definitely not helping with that. I, I, uh, it was a long yeah, this one isn't drive. helping either. I could tell my kids were getting restless. And it's, it's like dusk out right now. So it's like not, not ideal. I saw a sign for an amusement park zoomed by on the parkway. So I figured I'd treat my kids and take them to an amusement park for a couple hours. It was late already anyway, so we were just going to stop at the hotel soon. I figured I might as well. My wife and I followed our two kids, Tommy, seven, and Trish, five. They ran ahead of us to find a ride they wanted to go on. I had to admit, a pathetic looking amusement park. There weren't many other people there. There weren't many attractions either. More than half of what appeared to once be attractions and games were now just empty stands and buildings. As long as the kids were happy though, that's all that really mattered. Tommy was running so far ahead, pointing at one of the rides ahead in the dark. I thought for sure he was pointing to the Ferris wheel, but when he made an unexpected turn left and out of sight, my wife and I screamed for him to come back here immediately. Oh no. When he didn't come back, I told my wife to wait there with Trish while I ran as fast as I could to chase after Tommy. I couldn't find him anywhere though. My heart began to race. The feeling of losing your small child is a painfully scary feeling that will literally make you feel sick inside. I stood in place looking around in a full 360 motion, breathing heavily afraid <coughs> someone might have taken my son. I ran to the nearest worker I could find and gave them my son's description. They called on a loudspeaker for Tommy to come to the front entrance. In the meantime, I still ran all over the place searching for him. I stopped dead in my tracks, and I felt my heart drop when I found him. Oh, he was no. over by a wall of bushes next to a bathroom building. He was talking to someone who was apparently in the bushes. No, nope. absolutely not. Grab the child and run. Run as far as you can. Don't, don't stick around. I, I mean, I guess it's your child, but... And it looks like he was pulled into the bushes. I screamed Tommy's name as I took oh, a break the bushes. No. There was nobody around to serve as a witness or come and help me. I got to the bushes and heard Tommy talking to someone. I didn't hear the other person's voice though. I pushed my way through the bushes and saw Tommy oh, no. being pulled. I didn't see by who though. What's that? I ran to him and pulled him, but I felt something else on the other side of another layer of bushes pulling him in that direction. But quickly, whatever it was, let go and I pulled Tommy into my arms. Good. I told him to wait there as I pushed my way through more bushes to a small opening surrounded by trees. There was no one in sight. Why would you go in farther? I would just say, you know what? I got my child, I'm leaving. Whoever they are, 
fuck you, and I'm leaving. Like, I... I... I don't know why it's so hard for these people. I... I had no idea how whoever it was could have gotten away that quickly. I still don't. When I got back to my son, I took him back in public eye at the park and put my hands on his shoulders, <laughs> shaking him as I was asking him who he was walking with. He said he was following some guy named George. He said oh. George was a lot older than him. I took him back to the front entrance of the amusement park and had him describe George to the workers. They said they'd keep a sharp lookout for him, and we promptly left the park. We went straight to a hotel, and the rest of our trip from there was normal, except for the fact that I couldn't get the incident out of my head. Okay, these stories actually aren't that bad. I thought they would be okay, but they're like not. I used to work at a little theme park called Thrillville like, USA. Not that good. No, not the video game. There was an actual amusement park called Thrillville. It was very tiny and secluded though, so don't picture a big place like Six Flags or something in your head. I never enjoyed working there because my shift would always be something different every day, and there was an insane amount of weirdos there. But that's irrelevant. The park closed that's in 2007, not... and ever since, I've been from job to job in this shitty country-ass town. Damn. One cloudy oh, evening on my own in 2009, I decided it would be fun to go check out what's become of Thrillville, since it had been shut down and abandoned for two years at the time. I pulled up to the parking lot, which was of course empty. The grass surrounding the park was now overgrown, and the overgrown grass waved around in the breeze, suggesting an incoming storm. Nope. Sneaking in was easy, considering it wasn't fenced off or anything, but it was clear some things had already been torn down. Still, at the oh, time, damn. mostly everything was still standing, <coughs> it had become so much creepier now. I began to feel tiny rain droplets, but I didn't really care, I was dressed for rain anyway. No. Walking around the park was creepy, but the first really disturbing thing didn't actually happen until I heard something scutter behind me. To be honest, I couldn't tell if it was a person or an animal, but something was definitely there. I didn't see anything though, so I just pressed onward, choosing to ignore it. I was snapping constant pictures with my Canon camera that I took along because for a few months I was kind of into photography. You know, a passing interest. I snapped away at different buildings, the defunct roller coaster, the big old yellow slide that was now covered in mud stains. Then there were the buildings like the bathrooms, the main office, the varying maintenance shacks. I decided I would start with the bathrooms. I don't know why I thought that would be interesting, but I did. I stepped into the men's side of the bathrooms, which was obviously pitch black inside. The lights oh, no longer worked, so I had to turn on the flash on my camera. No. Nope. Kind of no, like no, that no, scene no, no. from the I first like song movie. Oh god. I took a picture of the sink and mirror. That did happen. That did not happen. Y'all didn't see nothing. Y'all. I'm for real. I'm, I'm about to edit that out. That's so embarrassing. That's not. You know what? I, I, nothing happened. Nope. Nope. Checking image quality. I, I just wasn't expecting it. I, I was not. Okay, hold on. I got to back it up. I didn't hear what he said. Inside. The lights no longer worked. So I had to turn on the flash on my camera. Kind of like that scene from the first Saw movie. I took a picture of the sink and mirror and checked the image quality. I really don't like The this. light flash on my camera was very bright, so pictures in the dark always came out clear. Then I heard the slightest little ting sound. It came from the side of the bathroom with the stalls. I called out, is someone in here? There were two stalls from what I remember. I went over to the first stall and pushed the stall door open slowly. Oh god. I aimed my camera into the stall no. and took the picture. Oh, okay. The light revealed nothing but a toilet in the stall. I moved on to the next no, stall got... and pushed the door open. Oh fuck me. With this one, I was having trouble drawing up the nerf to take the picture. Right, I... I took about five seconds before I pressed the button, and the camera light flashed. And in that brief moment of light... No. Oh, my... I saw a tall thing. Literal chills. I, okay, you know what? I'm gonna stop pausing and just get it over with. Figure looming down at me. 
I shut the stall door and screamed as I ran back outside to the light and to my car. Yep. When I got to my car, I checked the picture I captured in that stall. That. In the picture was a figure, probably six foot three, standing in front of the toilet. But for some reason, the face was blurry. I couldn't see any distinguishing features. Oh, hell no. It seemed to be a man. As I browsed through some of the other photos, I picked up on something disturbing. In four photos out of ten, I found what appeared to be a person hiding somewhere in the distance, but always seemed to be staring at me. That's... In two pictures, the person was in the woods. In two others, <coughs> behind buildings or rides. I never sent those pictures from my camera onto my computer. Good. But I think they're still on the camera. As you I just haven't seen it in years. It might be in my attic. If I find it, I'll post them online. No. I quite frankly, never want to see that picture please, again. Please don't. I, I don't want to see that picture. I, okay, that last one genuinely messed me up. I I mean, it wasn't that bad, but compared to all the rest of the stories, it was better. Oh, God. So th this is why I don't do this. I know I've done multiple horror stories on my channel, but this is why I don't do this. Because it gets my blood right, it gets my blood pressure up and my heart going. I don't... Oh, my God. I mean, I guess if you guys want to see more of them, I do enjoy them sometimes because, you know, adrenaline and everything. But um, let me know what other content you guys want to see. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and thank you for being belligerent with me. And I will see you guys in the next video.